All right. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, Mizuki, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Bonjour, bonjour or bonsoir. B bonsoir to you. Uh, uh, I, so we're just about to get started. Uh, uh, everyone, please take your seats, and we'll get uh, started now. And uh, I will, I'm very pleased to have uh, with us uh, today Leila Zurugi, uh, the Secretary General Special Representative for the Democratic Republic of the Congo, who's speaking to us uh, from Kinshasa. Uh, and I believe she briefed uh, the Security Council just a little while earlier. Uh, Ms. Zurugi, uh, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I briefed the council today on the situation, particularly in Beni, because uh, that's where the focus was, even though we are operating in other places and we have other challenges. But uh, what is happening in Beni is, of course, very uh, 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 disturbing. We are facing uh, um, challenges that it's very hard for a mission to uh, deal with because you have uh, demonstrator, demonstration from people that are frustrated with uh, attacks uh, from armed groups uh, uh, from ADF, but other also uh, 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 armed groups in, in the area for a while. You know that since uh, the beginning of this month, we have uh, about 14 attacks and uh, uh, 80 uh, uh, people uh, killed Right. Yeah. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> what I try to explain is the context, because sometimes you forget about this area is the area affected by Ebola. This area uh, went through uh, hell for the last 20 years. So the population uh, paid a very high price. Uh, you remember when we started the Ebola, it was also... Uh, uh, we faced a lot of resistance from the population and attacks, and we have a doctor that was killed. So this is uh, 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 something that we uh, we uh, we know and we try to to uh, to deal with and to address. Uh, this, of course, was after a unilateral operation uh, conducted by the FRDC in in against the the ADF. This operation, as you know. Um, is not the first one that was conducted against this armed group. Uh, the area uh, where the operation is taking place is a very remote area. Uh, 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 it's a, a forest area, where re not easy to access, and population is uh, is living in many area, many uh, 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 villages. Uh, not easy to uh, protect every person. Uh, we, uh, we have a responsibility to protect. We have a responsibility to uh, work with the FRDC and try to, to make sure that this operation will not have the impact that uh, they are having now. But uh, it's not always uh, easy to achieve results. We, uh, uh, we have people that were killed. Uh, the demonstrator is not uh, peaceful always. Sometimes it's uh, aggressive attack on our uh, compound, and they, they burned yesterday the, the city uh, uh, town hall. Uh, they, um, we have uh, military from the FRDC, police also killed, civilian killed, including one uh, that was shot in an uh, uh, attack that affected our own peacekeeper. And I present my condolences to all the victims, to all those who are facing uh, this uh, uh, unacceptable situation. Uh, yesterday, I have a meeting with the president. I, I was invited also to a meeting with uh, uh, in the uh, attended the security national security council meeting with the, uh, chaired by the president with uh, all the uh, uh, ministers concerned and the leadership of the army and the police to coordinate our work to make sure that we protect civilians that we have mitigating measures that we uh, uh, plan uh, an operation and we ensure that uh, uh, we provide the support that is needed 
we already provided a lot of support to the FRDC with regard to Medevac, Kazevac, uh, providing uh, uh, back uh, uh, security, security to, to the, the, villa, the, the cities. Beni is a, a populated area, Butembo and other, other villages that are close to Beni. But when you go in remote in the, in, in the mountain, it's, it's uh, not always easy to be behind every village and every city because, you know, this, this group wait night, come discreetly, sometimes within the community because they are not all... They are also uh, infiltrating the population and kill with machete a family. And the day after, of course, you have the, 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 the drama in, in the street. The problem also is that uh, um, the, uh, uh, this, this group uh, uh, use this tactic to, uh, uh, of course, as a... As a a defense, I will attack, then I will not be attacked. So we know this kind of tactic, you know it in, in other places. We are dealing in a very difficult context. We have spoiler. We have also people that manipulate the suffering of the people and use it uh, either against uh, uh, the, the, the government or against Monosco. We are the scapegoat, we know that. We assume and accept because we have no other option but to do our work and to try to mitigate uh, the uh, the uh, uh, attacks that are uh, at, uh, the attacks against the civilian population you know that this is also an ebola area and we are very concerned that this will uh, also uh, um, uh, limit our uh, uh, ability, not MONUSCO, of course, but the UN, but other partners that are operating, many of them are already relocating their, their uh, uh, staff. Uh, so all this will, will have a, a, a negative effect on uh, the uh, Ebola uh, response that was, we were about to close uh, this uh, 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 break, uh, this uh, epidemic, and maybe we will have uh, uh, some uh, negative impact that will be seen in the coming uh, in the coming uh, uh, days or weeks. So that's what I have to say. If you have any question, I would be happy to answer your question. Uh, thanks very much, and we'll now open up uh, the floor to questions. Uh, I'd ask all the speakers to identify themselves uh, to Ms. Zerugi. Sherwin. Hi, Ms. Zerugi. Sherwin Bricepi, South African Broadcasting. And on behalf of the UN Correspondents Association, thank you for making time to speak with us. Could you talk about the targeting of the UN compound? Uh, there are reports that some of the officers were torched and there was, was looting. Can you give us some specifics as to what damage the UN has incurred? And when you use the, the term scapegoat, is there any... Uh, veracity in, uh, you know, in the ineffectiveness, perhaps that the, that these communities feel directed to the UN. Is the does the UN have any responsibility uh, in in terms of what has transpired here? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. First of all, when I uh, uh, with regard to the uh, the attack to yeah, the day before we have an attack on our component where we have our troops there. The second, we have uh, attacks also on, on our component where we have our civilian people. Our civilians are all now uh, 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 in Madivi under the escort of our, our troops because the attacks also uh, targeted civilian staff uh, in the city, uh, not only uh, MONUSCO, but uh, uh, UN in general. So what we are saying, what, why we are uh, uh, attacked? You have, first of all, if you see the, the people that were attacking our compound, and they, it happened, and you know it's very hard for me that you have troops that don't have non-level arms, that are in compound with arms and ammunition, and they are attacked, and you tell them, be careful, don't fire on the people, we don't want any victim. It's not easy to handle this kind of situation, but we were very keen to make sure we will not be ourselves 
coming to protect civilian, attacking civilian or killing civilian. This is terrible and I don't want to happen, but at the same time, there is a... But when you see who is attacking us, we are in a, in a, in a city of one million inhabitants. You see about maybe 100 or 150 people, all of them young men. You don't have women, you don't have children, you don't have elders. So these are people that either in good faith or manipulated or paid, everything is possible. So we don't exclude those who are coming in good faith and happy with our response and happy with uh, uh, the government response. Of course, when you put in a, in, a, in a mandate that you have an offensive mandate, then people expect you to finish the enemy. But it's not easy to finish the enemy because you are dealing with an, a terrorist group uh, using uh, a, a subversive and terrorist tactic, attacking civilians in the middle of the night. So whatsoever you do, and our people are trying their best, they come out, they are patrolling, they are securing the Ebola response, they are working to protect our civilian, protect civilian people. The many people that we protect, you never ever heard about this because this it will not make the, head, the, the, the headlines. Nobody hear about the civilian that we protect. Nobody spoke about uh, uh, the fact that what was about to happen uh, in South Kivu where people were speaking about genocide, ethnic cleansing, where we, man we managed to contain the violence, to bring the population, to bring the leadership from this community, to uh, secure uh, 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 discussion between the representative of different communities, the Banya Mulengi, the Bafaleru, the, the, the Babembe and others. This, of course, we forget about it. The reality in this area that we have a big problem when you go out in an operation without making sure that before attacking the enemy, you secure the population, you ensure that they cannot infiltrate, you have intelligence, you have also uh, uh, justice responding if you have spoiler inside, all these things when you are in, in, in a situation where you don't have all this capacity on the ground, it's very hard to win just using military offensive. Military offensive is necessary to, uh, 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 pe to, um, to put pressure on, on the armed group, but you need also a holistic approach. You need a, a approach that uh, uh, secure the population, but at the same time uh, 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 squeeze the armed group in area where they don't have access where they cannot receive uh, uh, resources, where they cannot receive uh, uh, access to wealth or to uh, uh, other, uh, other means like arms or whatever that they can use against the population. So it's a very challenging context. Why we are attacked? Because people are seeing that uh, uh, killing is continuing. Populations sometimes feel that the UN have the capacity and the resources more than the government forces and they can and they are not doing enough. So it's also because people expect you to do more. Even if you cannot do more, they think you are not doing enough. But the reality is that a peacekeeping mission is not deployed in a country to raise a war. We cannot afford to go and bombard and kill people, and then the day after you have photo of children and women massacred in a, in a bombardment by the UN. Can we do that? A government can do that and say, these are collateral damage. UN cannot do that, cannot afford to do that. And it's not acceptable that we do that, because we are blaming government when they do it. So that's the challenge that we are facing. We have to, uh, we are bind by international law. We are bind by uh, respecting humanitarian law. We have a mandate to protect civilian. Protecting civilian means that you, take, you protect any person, even a former combatant that lay down its arms. That's the reality and it's not easy always to, to do that. I hope I answer your question. Michelle? Thank you, Ms. Zarugi. Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Um, you mentioned that these attacks on the UN came after a unilateral operation by the FARDC against the ADF. Um, can you just tell mm. us 
um, or give us some details about apparently there's a, a joint operation being planned against the ADF by MONUSCO and the FARDC. What's the state of play with that? Is that going to go ahead? Um, any details you can tell us? That's the discussion that we had yesterday with the, with the, with the Security Council, uh, uh, National Security Council and the President. I make it very clear that we are here to support the FRDC. We are here to help them to get rid of these armed groups. But we do it within our mandate, which means that we know which target we are going to. We mean that we provide, and we already are providing intelligence. We are providing uh, a Kazevac, Medevac. We are providing uh, secu securing area where we can uh, uh, deploy and where we, we, the, we are over threat. You know, the, the, this is a big area and we have 2,000 people. That's what we have uh, in armed. And, you know, when we say 2,000, that means you don't have 2,000 combatants. You have, uh, you have driver, you have a pilot, you have uh, uh, doctors, you have so many uh, uh, people in your contingent that are doing something else. So it's not easy to cover everything, but we discussed with the FR yesterday with the government, with the FRDC. I think that you read maybe today, the, uh, the declaration of the, uh, uh, first of all, the statement yesterday with the leadership of the army and the minister of defense, and today the minister, the vice prime minister, minister of interior, that we are working together. You know, when we speak about a joint operation, it's according to what is in the resolution of the Security Council, joint planning and taking medicating, mitigating measures to make sure that civilians are not in the target, that we are protecting civilians, we are providing uh, 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 the, um, the support to uh, ensure that this will be done within uh, 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 the respect for international humanitarian law, human rights law, and uh, 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 within the due diligence policy that we apply. So we are working together. My team is already in Goma. Uh, my deputy, the force, uh, the chief of the, uh, our force, they are going tomorrow to Beni. Uh, they were already there and they are returning to Beni. Uh, uh, the, the government is working with, uh, with us. We would like the best way to do or to calm down first the population before going for uh, another operation is to make sure that the po population understand that its best interest, its protection is to have MONUSCO and force and police with them. We are deploying our uh, uh, special force, the Guatemaltec, the Uruguayan, to also be there and help because they have more knowledge on fighting in, uh, in, the, um, in the bush. We, we are also working on protecting our own civilian in the area. Our FPO are deployed there. We are strengthening our capacity. We are reducing the footprint of our civilian uh, that are not necessary in the operation. Uh, we would like to make sure that our counterpart, I understand that the government, they are, they are uh, fed up with all these armed groups and would like to uh, 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 finish their uh, activities and all what they are doing in their area. But I think we need a holistic approach and we would like to make sure that this will be successful uh, action and not uh, targeting the civilian population for a while and then stop the operation as it happened in 2014. You remember, it was also the same. Uh, we go, we attack, and then we cannot finish the job, and the population are killed, and then we stop the operation. So we need to make sure that when we start with this kind of operation, we'll go till the end and we ensure a protection of civilians. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Zarugi. Uh, Edith Lettera from the Associated Press. And Nice to see you there. Um, the AP story today from Benny um, quotes um, the senior official with Benny's military court as saying that the bodies of four young protesters were found near the UN base after Monday's attack 
and also that six Congolese soldiers were wounded by gunfire near the base. Can you confirm that and tell us how the young protesters were killed? And secondly, um, you mentioned that one of the problems is that the peacekeepers don't have non-lethal weapons. Um, isn't that something that you believe they should be given, particularly to deal with situations like the ones this week? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to, uh, uh, to ensure that we, I read the information. I think it comes from the prosecutor, military prosecutor, uh, or the military court in uh, Beni. Uh, confirmation that I can give that we, are, apart from the, the person that was killed today in uh, in uh, in the response from our military, which is which is, as I mentioned, and I already uh, present my condolences to everyone, and we are following uh, ourselves on the investigation. Uh, the person was uh, using a petrol bomb, uh, trying to enter the... Uh, the um, they were a group trying to enter our compound, and they received... Uh, 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 that's one case. The other, uh, uh, we, I read, like you, we are uh, sure that we did not... We did not ourselves. We were not involved. But you know, when the operation, when they were attacking the compound, that's the compound where our civilians are, and we have the police and we have the army, and that's how we have also military that were injured. We have, I think, a policeman that was also uh, uh, lynched by uh, by the population. He did not. He, we announced that he was killed. He was not. So we are following on this. I, don't, I can uh, assure you that we are not involved in this killing. The only case that we can uh, uh, recognize that it's our responsibility, according to the information I have till now, confirming with our uh, leadership, the military on the ground. And we, I asked already that we uh, coordinate with the military uh, justice to ensure if there is anything that uh, 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 is we are concerned with, but I think that this is not the case. I hope so. Uh, uh, for sure, uh, uh, you said that uh, uh, should the, the, our military have non-lethal arm. You know, the FIB was deployed there with an offensive mandate, so they were not supposed to to deal with uh, demonstration and to deal with people. Uh, 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 demonstrating using sometimes violence, uh, violent demonstration. That's why uh, yesterday our police were deployed with tear gas to try to disperse the population. We think if this continue that it must be, we have to, we need to have non leather armed in, uh, uh, in our cap uh, in, uh, in the area to ensure that our troops or our, those who are uh, controlling or uh, so, uh, protecting area where civilians are or where our component is, yes, for sure, it will not have the same uh, uh, danger and risk. But you know that it's not just to have uh, the ammunition. You need also to have the arms that will use these non level uh, 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 arms and you need uh, training and everything so it's not an easy task that's why we would like to make sure that the police, the national police and the, the national authority address uh, the, the, the population and ensure that this demonstration will stop and at least will not, will not use violence to know that we cannot end up with this situation. I called for calm. I'm trying to make sure that those who have legitimacy in the region speak to their people. I mentioned that it's not the whole population of Beni that is demonstrating in the street. But we have a violent group that is attacking not only MONUSCO because they burned yesterday the city, uh, the, the, uh, city hall. 
They, it was, it, they, they did that. They, they attacked police from their own police. They killed uh, uh, military also from, from the Congolese. So we have to address this violent uh, attack, even if we have uh, few people uh, uh, that are doing this, we have to make sure that we will have the response to deal with this. It's not easy, but we are doing our best to equip our people with the right uh, uh, tools to respond, and we expect our partners, the Congolese, to uh, uh, deal with, the, with the, their population. We expect that the civilian uh, side of the population will work with their own population to ensure that we, will, uh, uh, we have this to stop. James Bayes from Al Jazeera. Um, SRSG, thank you for doing this late at night. Um, an example to some of your colleagues after they brief consultations to come and talk to us. So thank you for that. Um, you've made it quite clear how complex and difficult the situation is. But clearly it's a situation that's been going on for many months. Now you are sending extra resources. You're sending your Uruguayan special forces. Um, as you look at the situation on the ground, do you think the UN has made mistakes in the way it's dealt with this? And do you feel that you have properly fulfilled your mandate to protect civilians in recent months? As I, as I mentioned uh, from the beginning, if you have civilians that are killed, then you consider that you did not fulfill your mandate. But I don't think that I can afford to say that I will protect with the capacity that we have. We have 13,000 troops deployed in six provinces, from the south in Kasai, Tanganyika, South Kivu, North Kivu, Ituri. We have 100, more than 100 armed groups that are operating in this area. Sometimes there is connection that it's very hard to identify, because people sometimes they are in the day, they are uh, in civilian, uh, civilian in the night, they are armed groups. It's very complex situation that very hard for uh, our capacity uh, to deliver on. So, so a quick follow up, but do, do we, you not have enough need, resources? Do you not have enough troops? The, there is no doubt that we, you know that I, 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 am, I am sending two battalion home because of budget cut in this context. We have a sailing of 16,000 according to our resolution, but I have 13,000 on the ground because I cannot pay for them. They have to return home. That's the reality. The reality is that we, we need, uh, uh, we cannot, we will have to do with what we have. We cannot do with what we want. That's a reality that we have to keep in mind. The second thing is that troops, the UN cannot fix the problem without making sure that the core function of the state have the capacity and the resources. That's what we are working on. That's what, I, what we worked on and we are asking the Security Council and the government and the partner of Congo to help the DRC to have the resources that allow to do, because armed groups that are from within the society will not, you will not win the war only by using military operation. You need justice to function. You need police to be deployed. You need people that know that if they do something wrong, if they are linked with these groups, is if we discover that they will be arrested. That's the reality. I visited a prison uh, uh, recently where you have people that are waiting trial because there is no capacity. You have to deal, that, that's the reality that we are facing. This is a country that have 100 million inhabitants, that is a continent without, uh, without the, the, the needed capacity everywhere. So it's a, it's a long-term process. We have a responsibility to protect the population. Every time we, don't, we, we cannot achieve to protect population, I feel that I failed. I feel every time. But the reality, I don't have the capacity and I cannot pretend that I have the resources and the needed troops and the, 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 their training and their material and their, uh, what they need to really address all 
the problems that we are facing on the ground. That's why it's important that we coordinate with the government, that we work closely, that also we address the spoiler that sometimes they are behind all this uh, manipulation. And I'm not the one saying that. The president has said, the, prime, the minister of, of interior said that. So some people are used in this area also to live from the, the economic war and manipulate people that are innocent, that are going through hell because of the violence, because of the killing, because of everything. So we need to have the population on our side. We need to show that this population understand our limitation, but at the same time, we have to deliver. And that's why I'm saying to our troops, what I'm saying to our police, to our civilian, I'm asking everyone, I, yesterday I was speaking to, to the FIB and to the troop on the ground, telling them I need everyone and each of us in his own mind when he sit with himself, he say, I did whatever I can, but I could not cover everything. But if we miss opportunity because we were not there while we can be there, that's a problem. If we have possibility to prevent something, to engage with the population, to make sure that we coordinate with our partners, then we have to do it. And we are really investigating and we are trying to understand if every and each of our troops are doing, uh, performing as we are expecting them to perform. But it's not an easy task even for them. Madame Zirugi, uh, uh, Morin Picard for Le Figaro, uh, pardon my English. Um, do you, uh, can you give us a sense of what the FRDC is trying to achieve uh, in pushing the ADF further north? And do they lack uh, projection capacity, uh, the same for MONUSCO, uh, in terms of the reinforcement you are sending right now? That's my first question. The second, uh, the lack of experienced uh, staff on the ground uh, with a view to um, uh, following up the patients that you brought vaccines to uh, against Ebola. Uh, do you think the situation could worsen due to the uh, current insecurity? Thank you. Uh, with, the fa with regard to the first capacity, with the first question, I think, as I mentioned, this is a very, very difficult terrain. We are in, in a very thick mountain area. The ADF, they are in this area since 1986. So they know every and each corner in this area. It's very, it's not easy to uh, 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 go for an operation if you don't have the logistic that is needed, if you don't have the information, if you don't have the population on your side, if you are sure that they will not have support or access from other area. So it's a, it's a military strategy that I'm not the best person to uh, uh, discuss. Uh, so what, that's why the mission, the added value of the mission is to provide intelligence, and we are doing that, is to make sure that we help Medevac and Kazevac, is to ensure that we will not go for a war and then the enemy come behind and attack civilian and attack me from behind. So that's the kind of things that we would like to prevent. We would like also, in my opinion, the best way to do uh, to address this, uh, this uh, uh, challenge is to ensure that you control the access area. You control the, the access where, from where they receive their uh, support and provision and from where they go to the population. So it's a long-term uh, uh, operation that needs to be well prepared and we need to be a, 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 a long term of, of uh, and, stra and um, uh, uh, logistic to, uh, to deal with it. And I don't think that we can pretend today that all this is, uh, is there. The FRDC and the president and the government decided to go with their capacity to try to deal with these armed groups that is uh, uh, committing a lot of atrocity on the population, threatening the peace and security. Uh, so they are doing uh, uh, their, uh, what they consider uh, its priority. We are working to help them and also to tell them what, what needs to be done if it is not, uh, is, if we disagree on that. And I make it yesterday 
uh, to them that we are partner, but uh, partners have also uh, the responsibility to share uh, uh, our concern or your concern with us, and we can deal with the problems if we can uh, fix it, and we are in good faith working with them. We, and I think that uh, uh, we need to continue to help them, but at the same time to make sure that the, uh, the population will not pay a very high price because uh, uh, we are not able to ensure their protection from uh, the ADF. With regard to the second question, the risk is not about non-professional staff. Because what happened, uh, the, 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 the agency, uh, WHO, UNICEF, and all those who are operating on Ebola, they are, for the moment, relocating some of non-essential staff. But they kept staff to continue to uh, uh, deliver uh, on the need of the population. The risk when you are not in full... Uh, uh, capacity and the risk when there is area that you cannot access because of the conflict and because of the uh, the violence, then you have uh, uh, a contact that maybe were identified that you will lose and you cannot access and they will transmit the disease to others and then you will have another uh, uh, another comment uh, uh, um, uh, spot, uh, hot spot that will blow up in an area that you don't know and you discover after you, you start hearing about people killed. That's the risk. That's the problem. Because we were, we were in a process that we always we identified almost all the contact. And they were following them. And you know that MONUSCO was providing in this area where we are mandated to protect civilians, we're also providing support and security to the Ebola response. We, we went even to area far away in, 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 in South Italy to, to uh, uh, open SCD in area where the response need to be there to, to identify those who are in need. So it's the major problem that we will have if this will continue for a while, you have the response never not have access to area where contacts will be lost, will, will uh, transmit the disease to others, and once you will have this kind of situation, it's blow up and you will restart while you were in the process of closing the epidemic. I hope I answer your question. Okay, one, one more question. Thanks, Mr. Zarugi. Michelle Nichols from Reuters again. Sorry, just one quick question. How many um, ADF fighters does the UN believe there are? It's very hard to say how many uh, fighters they are because, uh, first of all, uh, they, this is not an armed group that is identified, that is sitting somewhere. Uh, and you can uh, say, the, for example, for the Mai Mai, we can say there are 300, there are 150, because they are visible. We, you, can, you can sometimes see them. They sometimes uh, go to some villages and, and you are informed. For the ADF, people say those who are armed are maybe 300, 400, maybe more. But they, the, the maybe 1,000 people are speaking about people coming from outside. Uh, uh, from the region, uh, we have this information that we could not confirm. We have also uh, people that are maybe in the day, they are working, uh, they are civilian and uh, uh, in the night, and they use a lot of uh, machete. Uh, so these are not, this is not an, a conventional armed group that you can identify, that you can count the, the, the we don't know how many are. Uh, uh, contact our supporter, our uh, really uh, fighters. That's very difficult for me to answer. Thanks again. I, I think we've uh, come to the end of our questions, but I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Urugi. Uh, thanks so much for for providing this timely briefing and and for staying up uh, late in Kinshasa to 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 talk to us. Uh, bon nuit.
Merci et bonne soirée. It was a pleasure to see some faces that I used to engage with in New York and I appreciate that you are interested in what we are doing here in Congo. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Merci.